So today we're going to be propagating some of my chili pepper plants um, to come out with something like this that will then develop into a full mature plant. So last year I had a Fresno plant that I absolutely loved, it produced a ton, the chilies were super hot, and I really wanted to have more plants like that. One of my favorite chilies, and could have gone from seed, but I thought, why not? Let's take some cuttings, see if they take, let's try propagating. So right here you can actually see an example of one of these Fresno plants that I took a cutting, uh, put in a rooting hormone, and this thing just is taking off and looking very healthy and it will, as it starts to get a little bit warmer, that thing will just explode. Um, here's another one from the same plant that's starting to take as well. Uh, you could do this with all kinds of plants. For example, this one here is a tangerine tree that is just now starting to have new growth uh, and take off as its own individual plant. So when you do this, you're getting the exact genetics of that plant that you took the cutting from. So in essence, you're cloning a plant. So I like to do it with my very successful, robust, uh, pest resistant um, hardy plants. So a few things that you'll need to get started are one uh, container. I like to use clear containers uh, and you want to have holes in the bottom. This one I just kind of busted a few holes in the bottom because you're going to be putting it in a tray filled with water to soak up that water from the bottom. Uh, it has a nice cap on it. I don't sandwich that down too hard but it helps regulate humidity. Um, these ones I did in these little growing cups um, worked quite well and all I did was take a Ziploc bag, put that over the top and uh, once that's nice and snug that helps regulate the humidity as well to kind of promote that root growth. Uh, another thing you'll need is mix. Uh, so this is a potting mix. I use citrus mix, something sandy, something that has very good drainage and you don't want to pack it in here tight. You want it nice and loose to really get those roots growing. Uh, you'll need a knife of some sort. You can use regular clippers. I like using this and I, I actually take rubbing alcohol and clean it and make sure that it's uh, not going to spread any disease that way. And then lastly, uh, I like to use a rooting hormone. I use a rooting gel. You don't necessarily need a rooting powder or a rooting gel, but it'll take your success rate from 95 plus uh, and it just it works so much easier, so much better. It's cheap. Why not use it? So what I'll do is I'll put this in this little bowl here and I'll dip those cuttings in that rooting hormone before I plant them. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we have our Fresno chili plant that I overwintered from last year. Uh, you can see this one here is already flowering. It's not ideal, but you know, Typically speaking, you want to get it early spring when it's in a vegetative state, when it's focusing on growth. Now that's already started to flower and it's, it's allocating some of its nutrients to these flowers that produce fruit. Um, what I do sometimes, and I haven't done it in this case, but what you can do is come out a day or two before and see, okay, this is the cutting I want to take. Um, and you can actually cut those leaves in half and pull some of those leaves off and let the, the, this branch start to recover using the roots that are already established. Um, it's something that will increase your success rate. It's not necessary. So sometimes I do it, other times, you know, if it's a tree, yes. If it's just a chili plant like this, um, it's not as necessary. So you'll also notice I'm gonna be taking a cutting lower down on this uh, tree uh, because when you go lower on the tree, it has more of those root hormones present uh, versus this new growth on top. You know, you take this and cut it that might go, it might still be successful, but you'll probably have a higher hit rate down here and, and more rig vigorous growth. So I'm gonna cut this as close to the base as possible so that I can take a look at it when I cut it off and, and make any adjustments. So there's our cutting. And let's take that over to our little uh, setup. Okay, so now we have our cutting. Um, in this case, we've got a little curve here, so I probably won't make use of this. You could probably even take two cuttings out of this if you, if you were to cut it here and try to plant both of them. You probably could. Um, I only need one or two more, so what I'm probably going to do is cut all this off here. And I like to cut at an angle. Get a clean cut that I won't use. Um, 
And now we have some leaves on here, we have a few buds, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch off these little flower buds to make sure it's not focusing any efforts on fruiting right now. And then also, oh, I need my other clippers, I'm going to pull off some of these leaves. You can pinch them off if you want, you can clip them. something real quick. While I'm, while I'm grabbing that, I'm going to soak this in water. Helps minimize any maybe air bubbles or anything that could get in that trunk of that potential uh, new ch chili tree. So, while that's soaking, uh, another thing that I will do to minimize water loss is I'll take off as much growth uh, as I can to minimize water loss. Um, and any the leaves that I choose to, to keep on here, I'll end up cutting them in half uh, to achieve that same thing. Oh, fell in there. So for now, I'm gonna leave this leaf on and once it starts to get established, slightly then I'll pull that leaf off once I start to see some new growth. Right now I don't want to do too much damage. Um, so while that's soaking, take some of my rooting hormone. You don't need much. Um, and it's good to do it in a bowl on the side even though it's kind of annoying to have to clean. Um, just so you don't spread disease in case one of your plants that you're cloning has a disease and then you get it in here. So, now that I have that, I'm going to let this soak for a second and get my pot set up. Okay, while this has been soaking, what I did is I took my potting mix, the cactus mix that I like to use, and put it in my container. I took my finger and I pushed down in. You want it nice and loose, you don't really want to pack it in there um, to promote that root growth. Um, and you can see there I have kind of put a little hole in there. So, so now what I'm going to do is take this cutting and I'm going to dip it in my rooting hormone. I could get as much as I can on there just to not waste it myself, but any little bit helps. You can see there, the rooting hormone. Now I'm going to put this guy in. Now I fill around this just nice and lightly. I just want enough to really make this guy stand up. I found the looser better. It's not the same as transplanting a plant that already has good root development. You don't want to create resistance by hard packing that dirt in there and then the roots that are trying to form don't know where to go. Keep it nice and loose and it'll work just fine. Um, and now I'm going to water it in. Uh, you can water just from the bottom. I like to at least get the soil moist around it. Now, one of the things I've found that has seriously affected my success rate when doing this, especially outdoors, is uh, overwatering. And the soil needs to be moist, but it can't really be soggy. So I'm going to pack that in just a little bit. So be careful. If you start to see, you know, uh, moss growing on top of the soil, it's not the best sign. So now that I got the soil just a nice little bit wet, you know it's gonna hold up. And you can see now we have water coming out the bottom. So throughout the day, that can now soak up because there's holes in the bottom of this container, it can soak up through the bottom. And now I'll put my cap on and I'm not gonna sandwich it on there or anything. Just a, just a nice set it on there. And that way it gets enough oxygen. Um, and we're going to put this in a nicely uh, shaded area that gets maybe a little bit of sun. Uh, so I have these sun shades and I usually do it when I'm doing it outdoors under here. And these containers work great because it helps with the wind if there's any wind. So that's pretty much it. Um, give this, I would say, between two to four weeks depending on the season. Early season, they take a little longer to take off once it starts to warm up. The root growth will get a little bit more vigorous and in you know two to three weeks we're talking a nice little chili plant 
and this one here will be ready to be transplanted probably in another two weeks it'll have enough roots in this cup to be transplanted into the garden um, the nice part about this container is you can actually see that root development as this plant grows but yeah that's it hopefully that helps um, good luck if you're if you're trying to propagate something uh, with these steps you should be able to have a pretty high success rate